So guys, um, tonight for our Peace in the Pandemic um, webinar, we have asked Cheryl to join us. Cheryl, can you give a wave <laughs> to everyone? So um, Cheryl Robinson is a part of the prayer ministry here at Grace and um, has been a faithful leader for a long time. And so she is going to uh, manage the chat box and I think she put a note about that and answer questions and um, just help us keep things moving along tonight and um, we're just looking forward to talking about how we find this piece and so I was joking a few minutes ago that if you don't know what you signed up for you may graciously just excuse yourself <laughs> at any moment if this is different than what you thought um, but hopefully it'll be beneficial for all of us and applicable to where we are. So um, my name is Megan Keys, and um, I'm a part of the adult ministry team here at Grace and have the privilege of working with the prayer ministry and have been able to do that for um, many years. And so we're hoping that tonight we can look at ways that, um, that this peace that the Lord offers, that we can apply that to our hearts. And here at Grace, um, we believe that we can do that through prayer, and we all believe that, right, as followers of Jesus, um, that we have the opportunity to have personal, a personal prayer time with the Lord, um, but then also we want to offer that corporately, and so um, we have listening prayer that we offer, we have ministry team that we offer, we have intercession that we offer, so we really want to be a people of prayer um, at Grace and provide a lot of different opportunities for us to experience this piece personally and, corporate, and corporately together. Um, so we're, we're hoping that tonight we can spend a little bit of time talking about um, what it looks like to have peace um, inside of us, um, peace from the Lord as we um, are in this pandemic. So as I was thinking about Easter too, and thinking about um, like when you're looking for that prize Easter egg, uh, you really want that and you're, you're looking for it everywhere and it's what everyone wants, but you're like, well, I guess like I just, I wasn't lucky. Like I didn't get it this year. And so I've been feeling like that is what peace has felt like in my life in this pandemic. It's like, I really want it. Like I know it's out there, but like how, I guess it's not my turn. I guess it's not my year. Like I, I don't get the prize this year. Um, and so I've just been spending so much time looking at what is this peace that God promises us? And I don't believe that he's a God who's withholding and hiding this egg behind the bush. But, but um, I don't think I'm alone here, right? And <laughs> feeling like, where, where is this peace we all really long for? Um, so I love the verse that is in Matthew 11 that says, um, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Um, come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. This is, I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. It says, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Doesn't that sound so delightful? Isn't that what we desire? So, um, how many of you have said before, I'm fine, like, I'm fine. Um, I want to show you this image that is pretty hilarious. And there were several other images. You may have seen the girl in the, um, the t-shirt with, uh, like a big, like blood stain on it. And she's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> so I feel like that we've just been walking around saying like, we're fine. It's fine. I can do it. Um, but really we're not, we are tired. We are worn out. We are longing for this thing that we believe that the, the Lord has to offer, right? Um, but, we, but we really don't know um, where to find it. So here's the, the passage again um, in Matthew 11 from the message. It's also um, that the other version that we're used to hearing is also obviously wonderful about come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. But I just like how this one goes. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out? come to me. And so we, we know there's this invitation the Lord is giving us in this season. He's not saying, oh, do you want this piece? Well, good luck. Go, you know, go see if you can find it somewhere. Um, so, so yeah, I really hope that tonight we can um, look through scripture and look at what was God's plan. So what was his original plan for us? 
um, the perfect relationship he had to offer us. And then what happened? And one way to look at that phrase of scripture is, I mean, that uh, section of scripture, the parting of hearts. So we had God's original plan. We had the perfect relationship. And then there was this parting that happened. But then there was the promise of restoration. So my hope is that we can kind of journey through scripture together and use that as our foundation to look at um, the promises God has for us. So we can recognize the places of unrest. Um, we can release those to the Lord and we can receive the truth that he has for us. So you can let me pray for us real quick. Father, we just thank you for a minute to pause and to take a deep breath and just to admit that we feel worn out, we feel tired, um, but we really do long to understand how to walk with you in that unforced rhythm of grace. So Lord, would you just open our hearts and our minds? Would you just open us up to hear what you have for us in these next few minutes over this next hour, that we could receive your truth and that we would leave this time together experiencing you in a new way um, and, and understanding better how to live in the freedom and the abundance you offer. In Jesus' name, amen. So when we think about um, God's original plan and we think about um, his goodness, we can look towards Jesus, right? And we can see that um, the Lord sent Jesus to bring this truth, to bring this peace, the Prince of Peace, to bring this hope. And so if you look in Luke 4, we see that Jesus began his teaching and he headed to Nazareth and um, he revealed his purpose as he read from the scroll. And so Luke 4, um, let's look at this together, um, 18 and 19 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are downtrodden, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. So you see that there, he anointed me to preach the gospel, proclaim release and recovery. And then the most interesting thing is what happened next after he reads that um, passage in the synagogue. So he closed the book there and he sat down and he said he didn't, he didn't continue reading what would come next in, in Isaiah. So next in, in that passage that's from Isaiah, it talks about the vengeance of the Lord. And what's so surprising about this is because when he was reading um, to the Jews, they wanted to hear about the vengeance, right? Because they had been oppressed by the Romans. So they thought that, that Jesus was going to go on and talk about the vengeance of the Lord, but he didn't. He stopped where he was because he had courage. He knew his identity. He knew um, in Luke 3, the Lord had said, you're my son. Um, I'm well pleased with you, and this is my plan for you. And so he had courage to step into the goodness of the Lord and to proclaim this truth, this peace, this freedom, this abundance um, that, that God has for us. So we all need this. We needed it then. Um, the people of, of Jesus' time needed it then, and we all need it now. So we recognize that we all still need um, the, the goodness, the healing, the wholeness that God offers us. In 1 Peter 2, 9, it says, um, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have. So again, this is just a reminder of all the things we know, but it's so good for us when we're in a season of anxiety and fear to remember, to remember the truth, to remember God's plan, to remember what scripture says about what he has for us. So he had this perfect relationship for us, um, his glory and his goodness, we know in Genesis 1, where he said, um, everything he created, what did he say? It was good, right? We could all say it together. And then he said, it was very good. And so we know that that is um, God's heart for us. And so we see God's original plan. He birthed us from his own goodness, we are created in and with his glory, and God's plan for humanity is good. So let's take just a minute, and I want you to think about um, this scripture. 
For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. So describe the plans God has for your life according to Jeremiah 29, 11. So when you read that, what plans do you think he has for your life? And you can share that in the chat box if you want. And it can be personal or just what you think he has for humanity. Anybody have any thoughts on that? There's not a wrong answer. <laughs> yeah, goodness, right? To bring him glory, to overcome. You know, spend time with my family, help me find a new job. So goodness, he sees, he sees, um, he wants you to prosper, to love, good, to care. Give you a future and a hope. Do you see that part of it? What does that mean for you? Yeah, and I would encourage you to just to um, jot down some of the things the Lord is speaking to you specifically to remember. To see him in everything, that's good. To know that no matter what, he's in control, good. So how helpful is it for us to, to continue to meditate on and remember the truths. I'm going to say this over and over. I'm like, I'm saying this to myself as I'm saying it to you guys. Um, but it's a choice. We have to continue to remember um, the truth of what God has for us or our mind wanders, right? Um, I was just reading one of those scriptures about peace. And it's, um, he says, peace, I leave you. Peace, I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Um, the steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. So thinking about like your mind being fixed on him, he provides peace for you to use the gifts he's given you good. So I think you get the idea here as we look at the goodness of the Lord and the plans he have, has for us. It's so important for us to continue to internalize um, his plans and not just look at it as a time right in scripture where this is what Jesus had for people back then, but continue to apply it to um, our anxiety and fear and lack of peace today. Okay, so um, we're going to move forward then in thinking about God's original plan and, and the goodness um, that he had for us. He had this perfect relationship for us. However, we know what happens next. We know what comes in Genesis 3. So we, we, also, we have a spiritual heritage of his goodness and glory, but then we also have the story of sin and brokenness. And so in Genesis 3, we know where Adam and Eve were in the garden. Um, they saw the fruit. They thought it was good. Um, they hid from the Lord. So we start seeing where um, sin comes in there. And the beautiful thing I want you to notice about looking in the garden is that um, no matter what happened there with their sin and their brokenness, it says God saw them right? So God was not hiding from them. They were hiding from God. So even in the brokenness, even in the things that were happening in, um, through brokenness, God is still the same. It's, it's humanity who continues to waver. So um, as we see right here, this diagram, you, you are familiar probably with the story of um, Abraham and Sarah in Genesis. And so throughout history, you can see on this graph, there's trust at the top and doubt at the bottom. And so this is a great diagram of the brokenness and the glory and the brokenness and the glory. And so if you even want to um, flip to Genesis 1 through 16, uh, we're going to start and just give, give a little brief overview to help us relate to what's going on here, starting in Genesis 11. And so um, we know there that there was the call of Abram. So there's blessing there. So we see there's this faith and there's so many beautiful things happening there. And then um, it's where the Lord says, I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. I'll make your name great. And then it goes immediately in um, to Abram lying. And he goes to Egypt and he asks Sarah to lie and say that she is his sister. And so then the plague comes on Pharaoh. And so that's a huge dip, right? And then Genesis 13, there's faith again. And so um, 
And, and then all of a sudden there's selfishness and family drama and um, there's arguing with Lot. And then you go to Genesis 14 and Abram had um, to rescue Lot. Then Genesis 15. So you can see, we can just go all the way through, but why I think it's important to journey through um, Abraham and Sarah's story is because it's the story of faith. It's what we need to hear right now when we may, may feel like we're in a pit or we may feel like we're in um, a place of, of not being able to find God's peace. And so I hope that you find encouragement in looking at how the Lord did not change. He did not go away, even though um, humanity was all over the place. And so to finish out the journey here with Abraham and Sarah, I wanted to read this part to you in Genesis 16, um, where Sarah tells Abraham to sleep with her servant Hagar. And so Abraham does, but the verse right before um, Abraham had just, I mean, the Lord had just said to, to not do that. He said, no, I'm going to give you your own son. Do not go try to do this on your own. And, and then immediately, um, he, his wife, so Sarah says, no, you should go, you should go sleep with Hagar. It's going to be fine. This is always it's going to work out. And so obviously, um, Abram's not listening to God there. He's listening to his wife. And so we see where do we, we just saw all this happening earlier, right? Um, in Genesis where there's all this blame, there's all this shifting, there's um, all this questioning and unknown. And so we, we see a pattern. Can we all relate <laughs> to the pattern that we see here in Abram and Sarah? And, and so my favorite part of, of this passage is in Genesis 16, 7. So I'm going to read this to you. It says, um, now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness by the spring on the way. He said, Hagar, where have you come from and where are you going? And then um, and then it says, she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her and says, you are the God who sees El Roy. Truly here, I have seen him who looks after me or him who sees me. And so I think this is so beautiful for us all to note that the Lord sees us. He sees where we are in our story. Um, and then he opens our eyes to see him. And so I think that's so beautiful looking at El Roy um, he's the God who sees us, but he opens us up to see him. And so that's my prayer for us as we're journeying, journeying through um, this crazy time that we're able to see where is God working? Um, even if we're in, a, we're in a slump or we're in a spiral, we're in a place of anxiety, where is God? Because he promises he hasn't left us. And so I think it's so good for us to continue to remind ourselves of that. So let's review here, um, the parting of hearts to the promise of restoration. And so um, our hearts are separated from God, but God is with us in our brokenness. God pursues us and redeems us and God fulfills his promises. So these are all basic things we know, but I think it's so important for us to continue and reiterate um, that. And so looking at um, restoration and redemption, um, Oh, let me read this to you. These, no, I'm gonna read these two in a minute. Sorry, we'll go to that slide in a minute. So um, it's fine, you can go on there, Marcus. But um, looking at redemption and restoration, I, I feel like those are awesome words that seem kind of spiritual, but sometimes I have a hard time thinking, what does redemption mean? And so if we look at um, nature and we look around us, um, what, there's seasons, right? Um, what are other ways? Put up some ideas there in the chat box. What are ways in the natural realm we see redemption or restoration? Some other thoughts there. Or even in our bodies. What are some ways in our bodies that we see um, redemption? Healed relationships, good. Have any of you ever had a, a little like baby lizard who like maybe you pulled a little too hard and the tail came off? <laughs> Those tails grow back. <laughs> what are some other ways in the natural realm that you've experienced redemption? Broken things that make them beautiful, good. What about seasons changing? That's just a natural thing, right? The leaves fall off the trees and the new ones grow back. <laughs> Pollen. <laughs> is that redemption or is that going the broken side? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it does. It brings life, right? Nice. Good. One patience. What a process. That's good, Barb. Yeah, that's awesome. So I love um, just looking at the things in our body. So if you've broken a bone, um, if, if there's a cut, right? Like all these cells just um, um, regenerate and, and then your cut is healed. Now, obviously sometimes we need other things to help us out, but the Lord that, that um, the fact that the Lord uses the things in the natural, I feel like it's a great way. And we're talking about this redemption, this big spiritual redemption and the Lord turning anxiety to peace um, for us, just look around us and see what, um, how he's redeeming things just in, in the natural realm. So a really important um, place of redemption is also our souls. So Matthew 16, 26, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? So looking at like your psyche, your personality, like the word soul there is so much more. So how is the Lord redeeming the things inside of us? How is he redeeming our mind? Um, how is he redeeming our thoughts, our heart, our emotions? And so he is calling us to say, not only do I want um, to bring, you know, redemption to the cuts on your body and to the little lizard's tail and the seasons around, but all the things inside of you that I want to redeem that and bring new life to that. And so he obviously does this through us being with him, right? Um, through us abiding, through us spending time with him, communing with him. And so um, at Grace, when we talk about listening prayer, we love, we love this because it is us working with the Father. It is us sitting with the Lord as he is doing these things. It's bringing truth to the places of darkness. And so that is our hope, right, as followers of Jesus, that we're sitting in these hard places so that we can experience the redemption and truth that he has for us. Um, this slide is just full of, of scriptures about his goodness. He works all things together for good. His truth sets me free. Like, what does that mean? What does that mean for you to be free? Um, I would love for you, if you're taking notes, like ponder that John 8, 32, and ask yourself tomorrow, like his truth sets me free. Um, there's so much in that verse. Um, he wants more for me than I can imagine. What is your imagination like? What, what is he asking you to dream about right now? Um, Jesus sets us free from sin and death. Okay, we've heard this a lot. What does that mean for you? What is the sin? What is the death? What is happening in your life that you need to be set free from? And then Jesus came to take away sin and destroy the works of the devil. And so I think it's really important here for us to remember um, that the battle is not against flesh and blood. So as we're talking about all of these things, we're remembering that the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy came to bring fear, anxiety, um, all of those emotions and feelings that we know don't line up with truth. And so let's recognize that there's this goodness of the Lord and he has this redemption for us and that the enemy is at work. Um, the Lord has overcome, but we have to recognize that the enemy is working there too. Okay, um, do you have some questions? Um, here's a question that says, what are some underlying causes that you see that may have affected the thoughts and behaviors of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar? Put yourself in their story and think of emotions or thoughts you may have experienced if you were in their place. So let's just look at that first one. And that second one, if you want to write it down, think about it later, please do. Um, the second question was, um, how did God respond to Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar? And what ways can you personally identify with the struggles of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar? Um, but for now, for a chat room purposes, <laughs> um, put yourself in their story. What do you think some of their thoughts may have been that led to their behaviors? Fear that God is holding those promises or won't fulfill them, right? That's good. Lack of control, good. Need to fix the situation. What about blame? There's some of that going on that we saw. I've got to do things myself. Good. Shame, barrenness. It's really good. Lack of belief, imagination. Good. Disappointment. Too much being disappointed. Isolated. Good. Fear. Did we say that? 
lots of fear, deception. Good. So I think it's really um, helpful for us. You know, oftentimes it's easier for us to identify things in other people before we can identify them in ourselves. So as we continue to help um, to imagine this in scripture, it helps scripture come alive and it feels more applicable, I believe, for me um, when I'm able to sit in it in that way. So I encourage you, um, even this week, maybe to dig deeper into that passage and just continue to ask the Lord, what do you have in there for me um, so that I can, I can better understand what was happening with them so I can better understand what's happening to me? Uncertainty, good. That's great, guys. So um, the really important thing for us to take away from looking at this passage is that he sees us and he cares about our story. So then my question for you, my question for us is, so what is your story? Um, and if you haven't been a part of the unique journey here at Grace, I would really encourage you to participate in that because it, it helps walk you through your story. So you get to diagram your story. You get to think about where have you seen God working? Um, people have impacted you in your life. And that really helps you uncover more of um, your spiritual heritage, which really um, helps you walk in, um, closer to what God has for you in your future. So I'm, that's my plug for unique. So please do that. Um, but so what is your story? So how do we take this information then and, and recognize um, what, what is the unrest in our heart? So where, why are we tired? Why are we worn out? Um, what's going on there? And so um, I want to read this quote to you, um, the, ice, the iceberg picture. Is that next? Okay. We can't change or better said, invite God to change us when we are unaware and we do not see the truth. So we can't change, and I like this, or better said, invite God to change us when we are unaware and do not see the truth. And so the first um, and most important step for us is to recognize what is going on. We have to pause and recognize what's going on. Um, and another really great quote that I wanted to share with you, it says, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. So what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. And so recognizing the things going on inside of us um, is so important to be able to release them to the Lord and walk in the freedom he has for us. So, so how do we recognize the, the, the things stirring in us? Um, what, are some, what are some other words you think um, would be fruits or behaviors that you do not believe line up with the kingdom of God that, um, that you would recognize or someone might not recognize that might be hidden from them that need to come to the surface, like fear and some of the things we just talked about with Abram and Sarah. What are some other words you would use? Um, like uh, even behavior like panic attacks or um, anxiety or any other words that you think I don't think those are the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Have any ideas? Ever short with your kids? <laughs> ever, ever feel a little depressed or slothful? Ever feel like you just need people's approval? Um, yeah, impatient, inadequate just our normal things, right? This is just who, this is just part of being a human here on earth. So this isn't uh, to condemn us. This is just um, our struggle until we meet Jesus is trying to process um, all the places we need to invite him in, all the places we don't have rest. Yeah, anxiety, what's going on right now? Yeah, that's great. So, um, so when we look at this, um, look at some of these behaviors, it's so important for us to recognize it and then to reflect on them and to figure out like, where did those things come from? And so um, a, neuro, a certain neuroscientist, I don't have his name, but um, there's many neuroscientists who would say this, they're able to use brain imaging to show how our brains are rewired when we learn to name our feelings, when we recognize and identify our emotions. So um, some psychologists would say, you have to name it to tame it. Uh, which I think is kind of a funny phrase. But um, if you're able to recognize these emotions and name the behaviors 
then you're able to release them. Like things change in your brain. Like science can see that. Isn't that crazy? So I think for those of us who thought um, being a really great Christian is having no feelings, or it's always being happy, or it's always, um, you know, whatever you want to make the always that, that you wish, I wish I was always however, and I have to hide my real self because if I really love God, I wouldn't ever be angry or whatever it is. And so I think this gives us such freedom to recognize it's important for our brains. <laughs> it's important for us to name the feelings, to take time, reflect on those feelings and figure out, okay, where did that come from? And what am I going to do with it? So I think you get the point. So the phrase from um, root to fruit, I like that. And we're, un we're able to uncover uh, what's going on inside of us. So the fruit, what's going on? Um, the root, where did it come from? And so um, a really great question, you know, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to know about my anger? Holy Spirit, what do you want me to know about my anxiety? So it's just sitting, right, in a time of um, busyness, even in quarantine. Like, how busy are you guys? I'm so busy. Um, and, I, and I can't even leave my house. So we can just keep ourselves so busy when the Lord's inviting us to reflect on our feelings, our behaviors, our, um, our emotions. And so this is a picture of root rot. I don't know how many of you are familiar <laughs> with root rot, um, but you should Google that sometime. And um, this is so crazy because for a while you can hide what's going on down there. For a while, the tree looks fine, but you push it over and <laughs> there it goes. There was also this huge tree I saw a picture of like across a whole city from root rot. And so the important thing is that your, your stuff is your stuff. Your baggage is your baggage and you're carrying it with you whether you want to acknowledge it or not. So, um, so th it will collapse. Everything is coming down at some point. So why not take the time and ask the Lord what he wants you to know about it and let his redemption start. Um, okay, any questions about that so far? We good? All right, so um, we, we need to recognize the behaviors, the feelings, we need to reflect on them, ask the Lord what he wants us to know. Um, then we, we need to release those, um, the, the anxieties, the behaviors, whatever it is to the Lord, receive his truth and respond. So I'm going to go a little deeper into these as we go through and this slide will come back up. But as we reflect on where these behaviors come from, um, I think it's really important to look at the truths about God and the truths about yourself and to ask yourself, what if these truths line up with what I believe and what, which ones don't? And so, um, you know how they, they show the, um, was it the hundred dollar bill and you hold it up and they, for counterfeit, they have people just look at the real dollar bill. So when there's a counterfeit that they'll, um, know it, they don't have them look at the study, the counterfeit. And I think that's a truth, a truth. <laughs> um, I think I heard that somewhere, but I feel like in the same way as we're able to focus on truth about who God is, he's good. He's not my enemy. He's for me. Um, as we're able to focus on who we are, um, I am holy. I'm his beloved. I'm a child of light then we can say, but wait, I don't feel that way. And so that's another like grid for us to help recognize lies we believe about ourselves, or recognize behaviors that don't line up with the kingdom of God. So I'm hoping that that, um, that makes sense as we look at helping, um, as we look at coming before the Lord and saying, what, what things are going on, Lord, that you just want to highlight for me so that I can release it to you? So those are some good truths to reflect on. And so as we release it to the Lord, um, this looks like confessing. We see this all throughout um, scripture, right? We know about confessing to one another. Confess your sins one to another and you will be healed. Confess. And so confessing is just telling the Lord, right? It's what we do when we pray. We're saying, God, like I'm angry. We're not ignoring what's going on. We're just saying it and we're just giving it to him. And then, you know how we talked about um, he wants to do so much more than uh, we could ever ask or imagine. So he wants us to use our imaginations. And so when we, just as we celebrated um, Easter and talked about his death and his resurrection, I think um, he wants us to imagine, what is it like if I gave him my anxiety? What is it like? Like if you closed your eyes and you imagined giving Jesus 
whatever it is you're struggling with. Sometimes it's helpful because we all have such different personalities and we all relate to the Lord in such different ways. What's helpful for you when you consider what the Lord is asking you to give him? Um, and then, and then what is he giving you in exchange? So he didn't just die, right? What happened? He rose from the dead. Like there's the redemption part. And I think, um, unfortunately, a lot of time as believers, we just stay on the death part. Either we're not good enough or life's not good enough or there's, you know, we can't ever find the prize peace egg. Like we just can't do it. It's just, <laughs> woe is me. But that's not, that's not more than we could ask or imagine. So it's really important for us to step into um, receiving from the Lord what truth he has for us. And I think um, asking Lord, what do you want me to meditate on? What truth? And you know, it's his rhema word, his living and active word, and it's his logos. It's his scripture and his truth. So I can't reiterate enough when we talk about receiving, you have to be in his word. We have to be meditating on his scripture, but we also have to be taking time, um, especially in this season of quarantine. Like, uh, can we walk? Like, what can you do to just be out and about and just be with the Lord. Um, even if you just need to, you know, maybe you need to get away from your household and go drive around in your car, <laughs> but just asking for his living and active word to speak to you. Um, that gives us life. And that's so encouraging because we all have access to that. So I love that. Um, so then receiving from the Lord and then how do we respond? And so um, it's not just being hearers of the word, it's being doers of the word. And so, um, What's, what are some really practical ways for you to respond to what God's calling in, you into? Is it, um, you know, doing the unique class? Is it plugging into a care group? Is it um, going to see a counselor? Is it receiving listening prayer? Is it forgiving someone? And so let's not stop by just thinking about these things, but let's do the things the Lord is asking us to do. And so I know for me personally, um, sometimes when I'm feeling anxiety or fear, I have to write out like Philippians four. I have it this huge um, written out in this huge paper and marker and just stuck on my mirror or, you know, post-it notes are amazing. Put them on your refrigerator, put them on your steering wheel. Um, what do you need to do to keep truth in front of you? Um, is it worship music? Is it um, accountability? You know, what is it that the Lord is inviting us into so that we don't stay stuck that we don't stay worn out and tired and full of anxiety. And so I think that's the invitation for us is um, not just staying where we are, but, but, um, but all stepping closer to a place of, of peace. So um, I love this quote from Pete Scazzera and the Emotionally Healthy Leader. It says, I discovered the inseparable link between emotional health and spiritual maturity that it's not possible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. And so I think it's a beautiful invitation for us not to imagine we have like a spiritual self, emotional self, physical self, but, but that um, he calls us to be united. You know, unite my heart, O oh Lord, that I may fear your name, that he's calling us to be united within ourselves, with our heart and our mind and our soul, and then with him, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he wants unity to happen between our emotions and our, and our spirituality. So um, there's one other quote that I really like from Doug Moo. It says, our minds are stuck in a rut, a pattern of thinking that is antagonistic to the will of God. Successful Christian living depends on getting out of that rut and establishing another one that is characterized by biblical values and ways of thinking. And so um, a book that I've really enjoyed in this season is um, The Lies We Believe by Dr. Chris Thurman. And I would encourage you to check this out if this, if this is intriguing to you. But he is really practical in helping us. Um, he has a lot of worksheets. And it's just like we were talking about the recognizing, um, reflecting, releasing, responding. So it's the same way. So he wants you for seven days, he says, just write, just do this for seven days. At the end of your day, just think what happened? What's an event or something that happened today? And you write that down. And then you reflect on that and say, huh, what was the, my self-talk? What lies did I believe? And then you release that. So your response is, okay, how do I release this? What do I want to process for the Lord? Holy Spirit, what, you want, what do you want me to know? And then what does the Lord want to give you and receive? So there, um, letter D. So what's your new self-talk? What's the scripture? What's the truth? 
And then how are you going to choose a new response? And so, you know, the Lord invites us to renew our mind, to change our thinking. And so for me, it's been really helpful in my latter part of life to recognize that that the, this is active, like we actively participate in growing in our spirituality. And so in Philippians 4, when he says, you know, whatever is true, what is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is right, think on these things, practice these things. And so, um, of course, we need to rest in the Lord. We ask him to reveal these things, but then we're called to practice and to step into this new life. And so I love that we're not victims. I love that we're not just like, oh, this is what's happened to me. But we get to, um, to take what is happening to us and to ask the Lord about it. And so um, I just feel like there's so many resources. We all have very different stories. Um, we, have, we have so many different disappointments and maybe so many things that, you know, um, have happened upon you that are not your fault and you believe they're your fault. And you know, there's just so, it's so um, we're so complex and our stories are so complex. But the invitation is for us to, to not be afraid to uncover that and to um, bring it to the Lord and to receive from him and to gather with this, this, um, this grace community who can support us who can love us well and help us step into that freedom um, that God has for us. And so um, there are some um, different links. And I think maybe, I think Rachel Vigar, if you're on here, um, that I wanted you to just post with the care ministry and counselors that are available. I think Cheryl posted some stuff about if you want listening prayer. Um, so I want us today, I want you to, to feel that you, um, have some practical tools of, of, of not just knowing the foundation of what scripture says about the peace that the Lord has for us, but that we can actually take a hold of that and we can take just one baby step, right? Just one step forward um, in, into what the Lord has for us. So any questions? Open up, I would love to open up to some questions you have or any discussion. Fun to see all your faces now. Oh, that's good, Marcus. What's practical prayer we can use daily for peace? Um, yeah, I would love if anyone has any insight into that. I feel, um, for me personally, I have a load of resources that I'm happy to share with you if you want to email prayer at gfc.tv um, that I really depend on for my morning readings and for scripture. Um, but I feel like my morning prayer is always, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to know? And so if I constantly ask the Lord that, I feel like he will uncover like, places of peace I don't have. Um, and then I just love reading the Psalms. I just love reading through truth. And I feel like every time I can stabilize my emotions with the truth, that that is what really brings me peace. Psalm 91, that's good, Lisa. New mercies every morning. Good. Awesome. Any other things um, that need clarifying or that you have questions about? Well, I'm really thankful for um, you taking time to join us and happy to continue any conversation with any of you. You have our information um, for the prayer communities here as well as the care community. And so um, we just want you to know that we're here for you. We, we've been setting up appointments on Zoom um, or, or through phone calls. And we want you to feel that you have opportunities to step into what the Lord has for you, even in this weird and crazy season where we could feel lonely and feel a lot of anxiety. But I hope that you can walk away feeling encouraged um, that there is peace and there is hope um, for us in this season. Yeah, so um, also on Tuesday nights, there is a um, prayer Zoom call at 8 p.m. that I'd love you to join. And then on Thursdays, there is a worship night. So if those are opportunities that you'd like to take advantage of, those are also encouraging. Okay, let me pray for us and then we'll be done. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you for 
your peace and that that is what you offer us and it's not um, fake and it's not something we can't um, find but your peace is within us that we carry um, the Holy Spirit and that peace is within us and so I just ask that for the places tonight that we feel um, unrest that we feel tired and worn out that you would help us recognize those places you would help us release those to you and you would help us just to sit and meditate on the truth that you want us to receive. So we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you go before us and you come in behind us. Um, we thank you for being the God of peace. In Jesus' name, amen.